Alrighty, in this last section um, on creating uh, interactive digital notebooks, I wanted to show you some of the things that you could potentially do with it. So we're going to be looking at a few different um, documents so that you can see and I'll talk you through how they were created. Okay. Um, so with your really, really young ones, you may want to create just one document and the students would all log into that same document and they would then go to a page the first page would have buttons like this so here we go we have i'm going to delete oops um, i'm going to shift back out and go there we go i want to delete that little sticky note there um, so you'd have the buttons the student would then find their name and then each of these would be a link to a page in the document and the student would only work on that document. So again, that's using the uh, image buttons. So the insert an image, there we go, insert a shape um, there. You, and you have all the different options there. You can see there is a button sh shaped one, it looks like a frame that works really well. So that is a, a way that you can create a document for your students. Um, something else that you want to remember is that when your students are working on a digital interactive notebook, they will be working on it in the workable format. They are not going to be working on it in presentation mode. So that when you think about that, you actually have a much bigger page to work with than you would just the slides. So that means you can add notes, um, information on the sides. Um, and there, like I said, there is a, tool, um, a, a shape under shapes. There you go. They're right there. You have the uh, folded corner. It's like a sticky note. So you can give your students um, instructions or information on the sides of the page um, for the to, to, to tell them what they're going to do. Now, here is another really uh, useful one, especially for your little ones. Um, now, what you want to do with this in this, well, actually, let me show you what it looks like in the end. You have your tree with the three, five apples up there. This has been used before. Um, so you have their tree. This is Mary's page. Uh, Mary can see she's got five apples on the tree, five, take away two. All right, I'm going to grab two apples. I'm going to put them in the basket. How many apples do I have left? I have three. So Mary then clicks on the box and types the number three. So that is a really, really cool um, manipulative that you can create for your students. There's lots of ways that you can do that. Now, what you want to do, how you want to do that is, if you remember how we looked at how to create our own background, we want to make sure that we have items that are movable and not movable. So if we look at this, the tree can't be moved. The apples can be moved, but the tree can't. The basket can be moved. The num can't be moved. The um, five minus two can't be moved. The only things that can be moved are the box where we put our answer and those apples. So how do we do that? We insert our pictures, we insert our basket. Now maybe we've already found our doc, our apples um, that we're going to use. Um, let's deselect that and that, oops, deselect some, some items. So I've got my apples. I'm actually going to move them off screen. Um, so on this, on this, the desktop, well, sorry, on the sides. So it's not on the actual slide itself. I then can go and do the file download to JPEG um, and put in whatever, what save that, reload that as my background again, and then reinsert those items in the place that I want them to be. So there we have a manipulative. Um, another thing that I often do is, um, in this case, it's very clear where I want my students to type. Um, I may sometimes use different borders. So I may use the dots or the dashes to make it very clear for students as to where I want them to be doing their writing. So there we go. We have our manipulative. Here's a, a manipulative for students that are a little older. And in this case, I know, I believe it's in P5, you do animal habitats. Um, so I can um, put my pictures of my 
um, places um, that I want them, the habitats that I want them to match. Um, you can actually insert GIFs, which adds that little bit more of um, an interaction. And you simply do that when you are um, inserting an image, you get your GIF. I like to go to giphy.com, um, get the URL from the GIF that you want, and then insert by URL and add it in that way. Um, and it, just a note that if you do want GIFs, they have to, you can't flatten them on the background. If you flatten them on the background, the, the GIF disappears. Um, another thing that we can do is, so I've got pond, Arctic cave, African plains, maybe my students, I want them to either extend their learning or maybe they don't, I want them to have a chance to remember what a word means. So I, here I have, I have the URL attached to that word. They click on it. And in this case, it's taking them to Google Maps. It's going to take a minute. And what you will see appearing on the screen is the Serengeti National Park. So the student can then explore the park um, right on the screen. Um, if they scroll down, they'll see photos that people have added um, recently. So that's an extension. If it's maybe it's a vocabulary word and you're not sure that your students all remember what that word means, you can do a link um, on that word so that they can click on it and refresh themselves, watch a video, go to a web page that reminds them what that word means. And so in this case, again, we have our images. They could be stacked on the side. They could be stacked on the bottom. And the students simply drag and drop them into place wherever they belong. So it makes a really nice, easy drag and drop. Again, this is for our, um, an older student, upper primary student, probably best. But you know what? Even some middle school students, this is suitable for as well. Um, you never know. Depends on what your learning goals are. All right. So there we go. We're dropping our, our images. And again, in these cases, we are giving the students the images that we want to work with. All right. In this one, I'm actually going to delete this image here, and I'm going to delete my uh, picture over here. So, whoops. Now, maybe we want to work on some cross-curricular um, activities. So here we're, we're combining science and we're combining our English, and maybe we want our students to write a poem. So again, look, we have this link. Um, if we don't, if, a student, if we're not sure our students remember what a word is, they click on the link and they can pop open um, a video or the, uh, a, a website that will remind us what that, that word means. Um, the student can then start writing their um, poem there. And this is where we really wanna teach our students how to use that explore tool to find the picture that we want. We want them to use the explore tool to find their own images rather than the insert image button because this is um, going to teach them again how about copyright and making sure that we are providing evidence as to where we're getting in our information. So um, let's look for a hummingbird. All right, so I'm searching for a hummingbird. Again, we have the web, we have our images. And I really like that one. So I'm going to click on that one. Um, it pops up big if I single click in it and then I can insert it or I can hit that plus on the side next to the picture. And then we can teach our students, you know, shrink it down so it fits in the space that we want it to be in. Okay. So again, we can teach our students how to use these items. Um, digital interactive notebooks can also be used for worksheets and for choice boards. So in this case, I'm just going to slide this over because we're going to and we're going to close that sidebar. Um, I can create a uh, a choice board where my students go onto the main page and they pick what they're going to be doing. So in this case, I've just started bu building it. You can see I've made it look like a cork board. I put a cork board background. I've used those sticky notes. Um, these um, pegs, um, thumbtacks are all um, don't, doing that search for a transparent or PNG um, thumbtack. So my student gets the choice board. They click on the one they want. It will take them to the slide. They click on it and then they watch the video 
and then they do whatever instructions that they have. So in this case, I might want to have um, a box at the bottom so the student can type their uh, paragraph or whatever your, their response is. Um, you can do it right on the slide. You can do it on the side, on the, um, on the workspace next to it. And then again, we have that home button. So the student clicks that and it takes them back to the choice board in our document. Um, another thing that we can use uh, some of these tools for is we can create our own create your own adventure type books. Um, we can even actually even teach our students to create these. So um, we start building it and they click the links to get through to the pages. So here we go. We have our first page um, and they can see I've, I've not done the links on all of this. Um, so one day a girl named Ashton was exploring the attic at her grandparents' home when she found an unusual box. Do we go open the box? Do we go back downstairs? Um, so in this case, uh, we decide to open the box and it takes us to the next key. So we can build, our children can build our own, make your own stories, or we can build them for our students. And what's really, really cool is if you add in that voice component, um, your student can um, listen to you read the story as they make their own choices going through the story. So let's look at another page, another digital interactive notebook. This is the workbook that you have been given. And so here are some different options of pages. Um, we're trying to teach our students to make sure that they are understanding our learning intention, our learning goal. They have their success criteria that they um, are marking off as they go through a lesson. So you could create a page where students learn to take their notes. Um, and as students go through the success criteria in the lesson, we can create little ticks that they just drag and drop and move on to the top of so that they know, oh, we ticked that, we did that one. I definitely know my teacher reminded me that we, we learned that in class. So you can do that in your class as well. Um, you can make a simple um, note paper page, um, keep it simple. Again, you can see I've used that dashed line around the box so that my students know where to write. And I've given them the starter today in class we learned about. They can continue typing from there. They can um, select on it and highlight it and type over top of it, whatever they wish. Um, for our older students, Cornell Notes. Uh, oops, I've flipped through a little too quickly. Um, again, we want to make sure that they have space for their learning intention, their success criteria, key points, cues. We can teach our students to use text boxes to add stuff in spaces as well. Um, again, on that choice board, um, if we go back to remote learning at any given time, a single slide with links to the work for each day can be useful for our students. Again, we could put a, a stack of little tick marks on the side and by doing this, here we go, we go to our tools and I think there is a, a check mark somewhere in here. Um, if not, you can just go um, and search for an image. Here we go, search the web. The internet has slowed down a lot. All right, check mark PNG, I search. Oh. So there we go, I can find one. Here's a nice green one, drag it on. I could literally can just drag it on if I wanted to shrink them. And I can duplicate, make a stack of them, leave them on, on the page, and then the student can just tick the ones as they've done them on their page. It makes it super, super easy for them. Um, you can also create your own graphic organizers using Google Slides. Um, and in this case, if you do it on an eight and a half by 11 page, I wouldn't recommend doing more than one graphic organizer on a page, of course. But if you do it on a Google slide, you can then print it off and use it in class down the line. So you have a digital version of it and it's just printed off and you can use it in class. So here we go. We have a T chart. We have a plot diagram with character um, information, setting theme, etc. 
there we go for vocabulary, we put our word in the middle, and then student activity where they're finding words, parts of speech is like, is not like, so synonyms and antonyms, prefix, root, suffix, etc. Um, we have our KWL chart and the for the older students, I really like the KWHLAQ chart. So what have I learned? Um, what do I know? What do I want to know? How will I find out, et cetera? Um, we have the readers and writers journal. Um, for older students, we may not want this much information, but we can very easily create um, a journal for our students so that they are writing about what they read. And of course, in this particular for, uh, format, it gives our students the prompts to help them go along. Um, there is an exa another example of our animal habitat poetry. So there are so many things that you can do um, in regards to creating your digital interactive notebook. Um, really, you know, be creative. The if And if you have ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I can help you navigate. How do I turn this physical version of an interactive notebook into something digital? There's probably a way around it and we can probably work it out together. So I hope you've enjoyed this workshop. I am looking forward so much to seeing what you create um, as you create your own uh, interactive notebooks. Uh, maybe you're gonna try and duplicate some of these pages in your own um, digital notebook. Please upload it and submit it so that I can see it. Um, you'll see at the very end of the workshop uh, program in Schoology, a place where you can submit your own and so that we can see how everybody's getting along. And again, never fail. Um, Never forget that you can reach out to me and I'd be very glad to help you as you create your own. Um, on top of that, you will see that there are a few videos on how to share these on Schoology and how to navigate, how your students can navigate them both on a desktop and on an iPhone if they are working on a, a smartphone um, for school. All right. Thank you again for joining us and have a wonderful day.